Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life. I teach people how to build DIY campers, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to wire a solar charge controller. Now this video is episode number 15 in a series of videos where I teach you all the basic electrical skills and concepts that you'll need to tackle the next electrical project in your camper. Now last week, I taught you how to wire a solar disconnect to disconnect the solar array from the charge controller, which is not only convenient, but is also an electrical code requirement. So if you haven't seen that video just yet, it's probably a good idea to put that one on your to watch list as we are going to pick up where we left off in that video. Now, as always, I have a blog post accompanying this video that also shows the step-by-step -step instructions as shown in this video, as well as a parts list for the parts you'll see and the tools I'm going to be using. You can find a link to this blog post in the video description below. Now, before we get started, here's a quick rundown of the three main components that you will see in this video, starting with the charge controller. Now, in this video, I'm using the Victron Smart Solar MPPT 130 solar charge controller as the example. Now, if you're watching this video, but have a different charge controller, maybe keep watching because I think that this will help still because 95% of the charge controllers on the market share four common things. They're all gonna have a solar array positive input terminal, a solar array negative input terminal, a battery positive output terminal, and a battery negative output terminal. So. These two wires are where the wires from the solar array go, and these two terminals are where the wires going to the battery go, or in our case, to the Victron Links distributor or other appropriately fused bus bar. Now the Victron Links distributor is the next component and is essentially just a positive and negative bus bar with four attached fuse holders wrapped up into one nice neat modular package. Pretty much every electrical system needs positive and negative bus bars and fuse holders and this does the job of all three in a size smaller than a piece of notebook paper. And the last component is the dual pole disconnect which can disconnect the solar array from the charge controller as needed. We covered this in depth in the last video, so you can check that out for more info. Now let's get started. The first connection that I'm going to make is to the equipment ground, which is this little screw on the side of the charge controller. It's in an incredibly awkward spot and it's kind of hard to get to once the other wires are connected and the charge controller is screwed to the backer board, so I'm just going to go ahead and take care of it now. I'm going to cut, strip, crimp, and heat shrink on a quarter inch wire lug onto the side of the wire that connects to the ground screw on the charge controller. Then I'm going to remove the ground screw and washers from the charge controller, place the quarter inch wire lug against the charge controller heat sink, and replace the washers and screws and tighten them down. Now I'm working on a flat horizontal surface over here for the sake of the video, but I imagine most of you will be installing this on a vertical surface as is recommended. And now would be a great time to go ahead and fasten the charge controller to the backer board. For this, I will be using four screws. Number 14 by three quarter inch pan head screws work great for this particular charge controller. Next, I'm going to measure, cut, strip, crimp, and heat shrink on a 5 16 inch wire lug onto the other side of the equipment ground wire and attach that wire lug to the center stud on the negative bus bar in the Victron Lynx distributor. I'm going to remove this nut, washer, and lock washer from this stud, place the 5 16 inch wire lug onto the stud, replace the washer, lock washer, and nut back onto the stud, and tighten to the appropriate torque. Now, a quick note, if you're following any of my wiring diagrams that show the equipment ground of the charge controller going to the equipment ground on the Victron MultiPlus inverter charger, and then continuing on to the Lynx distributor, do that. The equipment ground simply needs to uh, have a clear path back to the negative bus bar, even if there are other stops along the way. Next, I will be connecting the wire from the negative battery terminal of the charge controller to the negative bus bar in the Lynx distributor. I'm going to cut, strip, crimp, and heat shrink a 5 16 inch lug onto this end of my wire. And then I'm going to measure, cut, strip, crimp, and heat shrink a ferrule onto this end of my wire. Next, I'm going to insert the end with the ferrule into the negative battery terminal on the charge controller and tighten it down to the appropriate torque. Now I'm going to connect the other end to one of the spaces on the negative bus bar inside of the Victron Lynx distributor. I'm going to use a 13 millimeter deep well socket extension and ratchet to remove this nut, washer, and lock washer from this stud. 
Place the 5 16 inch wire lug onto the stud and replace the washer, lock washer, and nut back onto the stud and tighten to the appropriate torque. Now it's time to connect the positive wire from the charge controller to the Lynx distributor. I'm going to cut, strip, crimp, and heat shrink a ferrule onto this end of my wire. And then I'm going to measure, cut, strip, crimp, and heat shrink a 5 16 inch lug onto this end of my wire. Next, I'm going to insert the end with the ferrule into the positive battery terminal on the charge controller and tighten down to the appropriate torque. And the other end is going to attach to the positive bus bar inside of the Lynx distributor by means of going through a mega fuse. I'm going to use a 13 millimeter socket, extension, and ratchet to remove the nuts, washers, and lock washers on this bolt. And then I'm going to remove the nuts, washers, and lock washers on this bolt. I'm going to put my mega fuse in place like this and place my 5 16 inch wire lug onto the bottom stud like this. Then I'm going to replace the washer, lock washer, and nut back onto this stud and replace the washer, lock washer, and nut back onto this stud. Now I'm going to tighten them both to their appropriate torque. Now the charge controller is effectively connected to the battery bank, and all I would have to do to supply battery power to the charge controller would be to turn my main battery disconnect back on, but we'll do that in a little bit. Next, I'm going to connect the solar disconnect to the charge controller. First things first, I'm going to make sure that the solar disconnect is in the off position. Then I'm going to take my negative wire from the solar disconnect and measure, cut, strip, crimp, and heat shrink a ferrule onto the end of this wire. Then I'm going to take my positive wire from the solar disconnect and measure, cut, strip, crimp, and heat shrink a ferrule onto the end of this wire. Then I'm going to put the negative wire into the negative PV input and tighten the terminal screw. And then I'm going to put the positive wire into the positive PV terminal and tighten the terminal screw. Now the solar array is effectively connected to the charge controller. And all I would have to do to connect the solar array to the charge controller is flip the disconnect switch, but we're gonna leave that off for now. Now finishing up here, I'm going to put some cable clamps on these wires to secure them nice and neat inside of my wire duct. Now before I start turning on switches, I'm going to triple check that I've got nothing but positive to positive and negative to negative connections, which I do. And all looks good there, so I can reconnect battery power to the Lynx distributor. Then I can verify with my multimeter that I am indeed getting proper voltage to my charge controller battery terminals. Since this is connected to a 12 volt battery bank, anything in the 10 to 14.6 range is expected and these lights means that my charge controller is now on. Next, I can verify proper voltage and polarity from my solar array by checking at these terminals. And this is an expected voltage uh, based on the array that is connected. So I can go ahead and flip this disconnect switch. And just to verify that it is indeed charging, I can check with my Victron Connect app and see that the charge controller is indeed charging from my solar panels. Now, if you aren't using a Victron charge controller, you won't have access to the app to see uh, that your panels are indeed charging your battery bank, but most charge controllers on the market usually have some means of monitoring charging. So just read the user manual for whatever charge controller that you're using to find out how yours works. Now I can put the covers onto my disconnect and my Lynx distributor and on my wire duct, and it's cleaned up nice and pretty, and we're good to go. And that's all there is to it. My charge controller is now charging my battery bank from my solar panels. Now there are a few um, other terminals and ports and things like that on some of the other charge controllers in the Victron Smart Solar line, but they are optional for the most part. And I'm going to be covering what those are and what they do in an upcoming Victron Smart Solar MPPT charge controller product review type of video. Now the next thing that I would want to do would be to change the charging parameters on this charge controller to match the parameters of the Battleborn battery that is currently being charged. But since that is highly specific to this charge controller, I'm going to make another video within the next few weeks that's going to cover how to program a Victron Smart Solar MPPT charge controller, so consider subscribing. Now in the next video, I'm going to cover how to wire multiple charge controllers together into the same system. So that one's gonna be a little different, but kind of the same. So stay tuned. Now I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, it'd be awesome if you'd share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. 
hit the like button, and leave any questions you've got in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials, and I will see you in the next video.